called Redwoods and it's by Jason Chin. And I wanted to read this book because we are in California where there are lots of redwood trees. So maybe you can learn something new about them. And next time you're out on a hike, maybe you'll spot a redwood tree and it'll look extra special to you. You can tell whoever you're hiking with something about it. Redwoods by Jason Chin. <laughs> the coast redwoods are among the oldest trees in the world. Their ancestors lived about 165 million years ago during the Jurassic period. That's dinosaur time. One tree can live for more than 2,000 years, which means there are trees alive today that first sprouted during the Roman Empire. Redwoods have shallow root systems that travel more than 100 feet from the tree. They help the tree stand, and they need all the help they can get because they are the tallest living things on the planet. Redwoods regularly grow to be more than 200 feet tall. That's very, very, very tall. A redwood trunk can be 29 feet in diameter at its base. That's so wide that a tunnel can be cut in it big enough for a car to drive through. Amazingly, such a tall tree starts from a seed about the size of a tomato seed. A one inch long cone that houses the seed falls to the ground and if the conditions are right, the tree will sprout. With enough light and water, a redwood sapling can grow fast, up to two feet per year. Redwoods also grow from other redwoods. When a tree falls or is cut down, new seeds can sprout from the ground. Uh, from the big round masses along its trunk called burls. Often several trees will grow from a burl on one stump. So you can see here's a stump and even though the tree is cut down, these little burls are starting to sprout around the edge of it. If you see a ring of redwoods in the forest, they probably all sprouted from the same stump. So if you see um, redwood trees in a circle, in a ring shape in the forest, they could have been from one stump a long time ago. One reason that the redwoods are able to live for so long and grow to be so tall is that they are very good at defending themselves. Their wood contains a lot of tannin, a chemical that protects them from fungal infections and insect infestations. Redwoods are also well suited to thrive, to live through fire. If there is a fire, their extremely thick bark shields them from the heat, just like the heat resistant tiles on a space shuttle. Their branches don't start until very up high, 200 feet in some cases, which also helps protect them from the fire since most forest fires can't reach their needles. Even if a fire penetrates a redwood's bark, the tree can still live. In some cases, a huge portion of the center of the trunk has been burned out, but the tree keeps on growing. In many ways, fires actually help redwoods by clearing out other plants that would otherwise compete for resources like water and soil. Which is a little reassuring because we have had fires in our redwood forests in California and nearby, even nearby us. So I'm not really sure how our forests are doing in those places, but maybe they're a little better than we were thinking. I hope so. Coast redwoods need a lot of water to grow as tall as they do. And the area in Northern California where they live is perfect. It's a rainforest. The air is cool and damp and 
The land is often covered by thick fog. It takes a long time for water to travel all the way down, I mean, all the way from the roots to the top of the redwood, and the fog helps the trees by preventing them from losing moisture to evaporation. In addition, the needles of, the re of a redwood can absorb moisture straight from the air. So I didn't really realize that um, there are actually parts of forests in Northern California that might be considered a rainforest because we actually don't get a lot of rain in Northern California. We, um, we often have droughts, which means we don't have enough rain, but maybe in some places where there's lots of fog, it still kind of counts as a rainforest. In the summer, when there is much less rainfall, redwoods have an ingenious way of, co of collecting water. They make their own rain. When the fog rolls in, it condenses on the redwoods needles and whatever moisture isn't absorbed then falls to the ground to be soaked up by the tree's roots. Other plants that live at the base of the redwood tree use this artificial rain as well. So not only do the redwoods water themselves, they water all the plants around them. And that kind of makes sense to me too because I've been camping before, um, especially at a place called Mount Madonna, which maybe you've been. It's not too far from San Jose. And um, the ground will be dry when you go to sleep at night, but then in the morning, it almost sounds like it's raining and you go outside and everything's kind of a little bit wet and it's not really rain coming from the sky it's just rain dripping down from the trees the branches of a redwood are called the crown or canopy and start very high up in the trunk to uh, to study redwood crown scientists have to climb into them and this is not easy because the trees are so tall, researchers use a bow and arrow to launch a rope over the branches. When the rope is secure, they can pull themselves up. It is very dangerous work. When the needles fall off, off of a redwood, they decay and turn to soil. And redwoods are so big that, they, that this soil often collects in the trees themselves. Soil that collects in the branches of a tree or in its crevices on its trunk provides a home for other plants. Plants that grow on the redwoods are called epiphytes. The most common epiphytes found in redwoods are ferns. In one tree, researchers found a mass of ferns weighing more than 1,600 pounds. That's heavier than a full-grown polar bear. Ferns are not the only plants that make their homes in redwoods. Mosses, fungi, bushes, and even trees grow in the redwood canopy. Researchers have found a wide variety of trees high above the ground, including hemlocks, spruces, firs, oaks, and California bays. In one redwood, researchers found a California bay tree growing out of a knot hole over 300 feet from the ground. In addition to plant life, Scientists have found many animals living in the redwood canopy, including flying squirrels, beetles, earthworms, centipedes, spiders, salamanders, and yellow banana slugs. Some animals, like the red tree voles, live their whole lives in the treetops and never see the ground. Many birds live in the tops of redwoods, include, including bald eagles, ospreys, and woodpeckers. The marbled murrelet and the northern spotted owl live almost exclusively in the oldest redwood trees and are most endangered spe and are both endangered species. When a redwood is injured, the tree will often sprout new trunks that look like miniature versions of the tree itself. If a branch is damaged, a new trunk will grow straight up from the top of the damaged branch. Sometimes more than more than one new trunk will sprout. Researchers found one tree with more than 200 reiterated trunks in it. There was a forest of redwoods growing atop a single tree. The crown of a redwood can be very complex. As the tree grows its main branches and the branches of the new trunks, 
crisscross and run into each other, forming a maze of growth. The crown can become so dense that from its interior, you can't see the ground or the sky. Researchers have even gotten lost while exploring the crown. That means they're up in the top of the tree and they get lost. The largest of all redwoods are in a class of their own called titans. For a long time, the record holder for the tallest tree in the world was the stratosphere giant, measuring a whopping 370 feet. But that record was broken in the summer of 2006 when researchers discovered Hyperion, a giant coast redwood rising 379.1 feet from the ground, and it's still growing. That's very tall. That's six stories taller than the Statue of Liberty. It's taller than a 30-story skyscraper. It's so tall that if it were introduced to a city skyline, it would fit right in. Right among the skyscrapers, it would be just as tall. But they don't go in the middle of a city like that. So you wouldn't see it right in the middle of a city. But that's how tall it would be. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that book. I hope that you learned something new about redwood trees and next time you see one, that you look at it a little bit differently because you've learned so much more about them. I think it's pretty amazing how old they are. And I think it's pretty special that they really only grow in Northern California where we are. So we're pretty lucky we should really appreciate them.